Il Goban, uh, a more easy name to pronounce. Uh, and working with SMB as a global coordinator on uh, sustainable markets. Uh, the outline of my presentation, uh, I will start with some perspectives and then some examples from the reality of, uh, of SMV. Uh, and then I will say something on inclusive business, on public-private partnerships, and then some of our lessons learned or pra best practices on, uh, on scaling. Uh, some perspectives. Uh, last uh, February, and I believe some of you were there as well, uh, I participated in a, in a conference of The Economist on food security. And there was a soil scientist, and uh, he said basically uh, around the world there are 20,000 uh, soil scientists, and their main indicator of success is the number of publications. So if you look at it, there's 60,000 uh, publications a year on soil, uh, but in the past 10 years the soil only got worse and worse. And it's not me talking here, it's a soil scientist, right? So he puts his own work into perspective. Uh, have you seen this picture? How many of you know this one? Ah, uh, good, quite some. Uh, it's a sculpture, actually. It's a sculpture in Berlin. And the title of the sculpture is uh, Politicians Discussing Global Warming. <laughs> Another perspective, uh, an entrepreneur. And actually, uh, her name is uh, Josephine Ocot. Uh, she was also uh, at that conference and she presented. And this was a very inspiring story uh, because basically what she did, she turned a development challenge into a business opportunity. Uh, the story is like this. Researchers found out there is a yield gap, about a factor of three between the actual yield and what is possible. And uh, one of the main reasons for that is the uh, availability of seeds and the availability of good services. So she's turned it into a business proposition. She started to produce seeds locally. And um, she now has a very well running business with basically a two and a half million uh, dollar turnover, 140 staff working for her, mainly female, and 900 farmers supplying seeds to her on a regular basis. And I'm not yet talking about the impact she has on the, on the smallholder farmers. So I think a very nice example. <coughs> uh, in Holland, we love the Dutch diamond. Uh, this was mentioned already by, uh, by Kees Dade, as well as uh, 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 Marcel Bukebo. Um, and yeah, basically I'm not saying much on it, but I think the key roles, in my view, uh, would be that uh, the private sector, they are really there to invest and develop innovative business models. Uh, the public sector is there to set the rules of the game, establish the United environment. Uh, the research and knowledge is there to investigate, develop and disseminate knowledge. And NGOs are there to safeguard inclusion and sustainability. Uh, just allow me one slide on SMV. Uh, we are the Netherlands Development Organization working in close to 40 countries around the world in three sectors, exactly the sectors which also uh, Marcel came up with, energy, water and food. Uh, and in agriculture, uh, we basically have four teams we work in, sustainable markets, food and nutrition security, climate smart agriculture, and gender and youth. Uh, we have a couple of partnerships, uh, and these are not all of them, but as you can see here, there are quite some uh, CG centers actually that we are partnering with. and. Um, I'm now going to show you a number of, uh, of examples. And above the examples, it's basically the key lesson learned or the best practice uh, uh, based on that example we have developed. So first of all, uh, in Kenya, uh, a program called Sustainable Market System for Pastoralists in, uh, in Kenya. Uh, we do that together with ILRI. Uh, it's funded by the uh, European Union. And it's basically on strengthening the SMEs in, uh, in, uh, in livestock, in fodder, in camel milk uh, value change. Uh, it's also to facilitate uh, uh, markets. And if you look at the role of ILRI, obviously, it's to develop the knowledge base for climate uh, adaptation and eh, for, 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 for pastoralists. So I think we are very complementary there. Uh, the results, 25,000 pastoralists benefit and about 20 uh, local markets 
uh, have been supported and established. So market-based systems, it's about the market and the way the market takes up innovations. A second thing, and I think it was already mentioned by somebody else, uh, there needs to be a viable business case at the core. Uh, this is an example of uh, cassava in the Mekong region, uh, where we basically work with SIAF, also one of the CG centers. They bring in again the knowledge and the expertise on, uh, on cassava. Um, and we bring in our knowledge and expertise on working with small and medium enterprises at the local level. Um, and it's perhaps good to show this one. Um, this is a, a classic uh, value chain going from input supply to consumption. And you see that a lot of more traditional interventions, development interventions, they look at the farmers, and we talk a lot about the farmers, uh, but we see that more and more we work actually with the SMEs uh, as an entry point for interventions. And in that way, really uh, pull uh, the chain instead of uh, pushing it. Uh, the results here uh, is fairly small, uh, about 6 to 10 processors uh, reaching out to about 15,000 farmers uh, who have an increased income of 30, 30%, an increased productivity of 25%, and actually an increased volume for the processors of, uh, what was it again, $16 million. Um, Another best practice, a leveraging investment. So the investment should really come from the different parties in the partnership. Um, yeah, this is an example, uh, again, on COCO, uh, with Econ in Nicaragua. Uh, Econ puts in 5 million euro in this partnership, and, and also the, the Dutch government is supporting this particular partnership. Uh, in terms of impact here, uh, 5,000 farmers, uh, adapt uh, agroforestry practices for the production of their uh, uh, for, of their cocoa and, and coffee. And the research, there's no CG center here, but in Funica there is also some uh, research uh, organizations uh, uh, presented. Uh, we talked a bit about uh, scale, and in my view it's very important to build in scale from the start. Uh, there's also this saying on pilots never fail and pilots never scale. Um, I believe it's important to, to see hey, what is the vision on scale when we start a partnership. And this is, I like this example a lot actually. It's about to start, so there's no results yet. Uh, but this is again funded by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs via the Netherlands Space Office, basically making, um, developing a proper business model for the provision of information services to pastoralists. And the nice thing is that Orange is putting also money on the table, uh, close to 2 million euro, uh, and they see this as a viable business model. Their, their, their revenue model is basically SMS and, and, and telephone uh, calls, and they have an existing model which proved to be commercially viable for, for farmers, and they now want to extend that to, uh, to pastoralists. And I mean, the target really is, uh, is 150,000 pestilists who will make use of, um, of information services. This is about services, of information services on where's the water based on the satellite, where's the food, what are, what are the market prices, uh, and they also can, can call into a technical support uh, facility. Um, enabling environment, another important factor to, uh, to achieve skill. And just an example here, a partnership between SMV and Hitlery, uh, and, uh, and again the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, uh, and, and one of the focus areas is really on, on sustainable nutrition for all and nutrition sensitive uh, value chains. Uh, again, this is also about to start, and this one has a particularly strong emphasis on advocacy, on really advocating, on strengthening the role of local civil society organizations to advocate for, for, for uh, sustainable nutrition for all and nutrition sensitive value chains. So, okay, at least these are some examples. I, haven't, I have no time to really go in depth. Uh, so what are some of the underlying models here? Uh, one is what we call the inclusive business model. Uh, basically uh, a model where you incorporate low income groups in the value proposition or in the uh, value chain of the company. Uh, this can be as suppliers, 
Uh, this can be as consumers or distributors or as employees. So there's basically yeah, the dimension of the economic benefits and there's the dimension of the social benefits. So some of the core characteristics here, it's a core business initiative. It's, it's building on a business need. Yeah, so uh, we talked a bit about it already. It is climate smart. I added that one actually uh, uh, recently. And it includes uh, uh, the base of the pyramid. Uh, so it includes the low income groups in the business proposition. This is increasingly getting traction, both with big companies, uh, and then already there were some examples, uh, but certainly also with small and medium enterprises at the local level, who increasingly want to incorporate and see opportunities, business opportunities, with the BOP and the low income groups. So I believe, or we believe at SNV, that if you look at skill, you need to buy in, you need to have the buy in of the SMEs, of small and medium enterprises at the local level, and this is the way to do it. Uh, well, we talked a lot about PPP, just to make you aware of this, uh, SSNV, together with the Partnership Resource Center, uh, Lagen University CDI, and ACO for All, uh, we have a knowledge program around PPPs, and there is some material here, I believe, on the, on the tables. Uh, and this is basically a knowledge program tied in uh, to the, the PPP facility of the Dutch government, uh, both on water and food. It is really about developing best practices, uh, business models, how do you achieve skill, a lot of those knowledge questions related to, uh, to PPPs. Uh, maybe I should skip, well, maybe just to show this one quickly. If you look at the portfolio of the PPPs which have been financed right now, you see about 50% of them are related to sourcing, about 40% are related to services and inputs, and about 10% are really on uh, improved food products. Okay, this is my last slide. Um, what are some of the best practices? A bit of repetition of what I have already stated. A collaboration is the best way to work. It's the only way to work, really. Um, and I still see there's a lot of different languages and a lot of, there's quite some big gap between these actors. This is easier said than done. And I think it requires some concerted effort of all actors involved. Develop markets-based system, looking at the market system, why it's not performing, how can we intervene uh, to, 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 to make it work better. Uh, a final business case at the core, the local SMEs as an entry point for interventions. Leveraging investment, very important, it's not about donor money, it's about investment, also of the private sector, of financial service providers. Building skill from the start, uh, and address the enabling environment, and co-creation, develop the agenda together, jointly. Um, and yeah, the quick win, I know research, there's often no quick wins in research, but particularly as a means, they are looking for quick wins, so it's good to have a, have a perspective on that. Thank you very much.